So the summer before the season started, uh, the men's soccer team here in Taylor, we got to go out to Cody, Wyoming for a preseason trip. So we showed up probably first week of August uh, and took a bus out to Cody, Wyoming, a long bus ride. Uh, but we were out there, we got to see some national parks, went to the Grand Tetons and Yellowstone, which was really, really cool. Um, got some training in, got a preseason game in. Um, just a lot of time to just do some team bonding, just be with the guys. Uh, it, was, it was pretty special. I think the single most important thing for this team this year was the fact that we got to have this Cody trip and just, you know, make an entire culture shift. Um, how we interact with each other, how we interact with others, how we uh, represent Taylor soccer uh, on and off the field. I live in Bolivia. Uh, that's where that's where I grew up. That's where I've lived most of my life. Uh, so to me, I've always um, I've always watched movies where, where you have Yellowstone, where you have rodeos. So to me, it was it was like going to one of those movies, being able to see all the amazing sights. And obviously, it's it's different when you're actually there. You know, normally you show up, you got to do a fitness test. Um, you know, for any freshman, any year, it's a quick start. But especially going on a preseason trip on a bus. So we kind of had to be especially intentional with them because, man, we're spending so much time with them. Um, get them used to how we do things. And that started when they showed up on campus, but also started beforehand. So I'd say, you know, we had Zooms where we talked to them. They got to know the team even before we got on the trip, um, calling them, getting them so they'd feel as comfortable as possible when they show up to campus to make that transition as easy as possible. When we got to Cody, we were split up in between three houses. So there's like a third of the team at one house, a third of the team in the second house, and then the rest of the guys at the third house. So we would spend a lot of time at the houses when we weren't practicing. We would practice usually twice a day, which was pretty exhausting. So we would head back to our houses and we would just kind of relax and try to recover for the next training session. Um, but again, there was time to talk. We would make meals together. Uh, the coaches would buy food for us, and so we were in charge of like, making our dinners a lot of the nights, which was pretty fun, trying to cook and uh, put it all together and make sure it tasted good too. But we also had some time to get together as a whole team, and we call it discipleship time. Really, really special, really meaningful time. Again, to get to know people's stories, but also kind of their testimonies and their faith walks, um, and how God's been moving in their lives and how He is moving right now. So it was, it was really special to get that side. Um, of the trip along with you know obviously training and getting ready getting ready for our season. I think being able to step back being able to go to the core of who we are of who we are as a team we are a Christian team being able to do that discipleship and grow together as, as brothers in Christ was just something different and something we needed and I think it it shows now. We had a little dip this season um, at home and that was kind of a wake up call. It was like, hey, are we as unified as we were in Cody? And it's sort of set the standard for us for how we want to be as far as connected. So um, it's, yeah, it was a thing to go back to and a standard for us to kind of rise up to as a team and to stay unified um, outside the pitch as well. If I were to say like, what was, you know, the two or three things that were most impactful on the Cody trip, number one would be just spending time with God um, and that, that may sound super cliche, but just being with him and getting to know him, not necessarily checking things off the list, or one of the things we talked about when we were out there is hopping off the performance treadmill. Like, it's, it's so easy for us in, in our world today to feel like we have to do this and do that to you know, be a better Christian, be a better person, but really trying to hop off that performance treadmill, if you will, um, and just kind of settle into just knowing God and being with God. And kind of an extension of that is just being with and knowing with the people around you, which, I mean, we've talked about that with, with the trip as a whole and just getting to know the guys, but carrying that out into the day-to-day -day stuff here on campus now that we're back, you know, getting lunch with guys or just hanging out and watching a movie on the weekends or, I don't know, just, just having those tighter hugs when, you know, when we're celebrating a goal. Like, there's just, there's something deeper in that. And so I'd say those are the two, probably three things that have really stuck with me so far.